the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club has not been found by a jury in the state of Nevada to be a criminal gang. This is Adam Lee Hall, who police said kidnapped, murdered, and severed people. Six-year-old Hall is a member of Hell's Angels. He's charged, along with two others, with killing David Glasser, Edward Frampton, and Robert Chadwell in August 2011. On August 28, 2011, three Pittsfield citizens, Edward Frampton, David Glasser, and Robert Chadwell, were abducted, killed, and dismembered. The prosecution has alleged that Adam Lee and two others, Viovis Hall and David Chalyu, were responsible for the heinous crime. Rose Dawson testified in court that when she arrived at Adam Lee Hall's home on the morning of August 28th, she found Caius Viovis dozing off on a sofa in the living room. Little did she know that the three men had already committed the triple murder. David Casey, accused of being an accessory to the murders, testified that Hall top member of the local Hells Angels chapter and recounted the gruesome details of the killings to him. Casey told the court that Viovis was someone he had never met before. Hall and Chalyu were previously found guilty of the murders, kidnappings, and witness intimidation. They are currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of release. The victims disappeared weeks before they were scheduled to testify against Hall. Their dismembered remains were found 10 days later in Beckett. Casey testified that Hall had visited him on August 28th and had informed him that he had killed Glasser. He described how Hall had held Glasser's head while aiming a gun at it and tried to shoot him, but the gun didn't fire. According to Casey, one of the men had taken great pleasure in torturing and dismembering the victims. Hall had assured Casey that his sister and her boyfriend would be safe if he helped bury the remains. Casey dug a hole. Hall brought the bags containing the victims' corpses. Casey placed the bags in the hole and covered them with dirt and rocks. Hall showed no reaction in court as he was handed five consecutive life sentences. The charge of the defendant with intimidation of a witness. You, upon your oath, do say that the defendant is guilty. So say you, Madam Forley? Yes. So say you are, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. In Record 2010-237, Count 1, charging the defendant with kidnapping. You, upon your oaths, do say that the defendant is guilty. So say you, Madam Poor Lady? Yes. So say you are, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yeah, yes. Next, we go to Rhode Island, where Joseph Lancia, the head of the Hells Angels chapter in Rhode Island, is sentenced to five years at the adult correctional institutions after pleading guilty to multiple felonies. The motorcycle gang is tonight at the ACI. Joseph Lancia was officially sentenced this morning and only 12 news was there. Target 12 investigator Tim White is here now with the exclusive details. On June 12, 2019, Lancia fired an illegal firearm at the driver of a vehicle passing a Hells Angels clubhouse in Providence. The victim, a prior candidate for membership in the Hells Angels chapter in Rhode Island, was embroiled in a running argument with the defendant. The defendant pulled a semi-automatic weapon from his pocket and fired one shot at the victim's mock semi-truck as it passed the clubhouse. The defendant then entered the clubhouse as the victim continued to drive away after the shooting and turned his truck onto Messer Street. After the incident, a digital video recorder with recorded footage of the shooting was removed from the clubhouse by another known Hells Angel from Rhode Island who was detained and accused of misprision of a felony concealing a crime. Joseph Lancia was charged with assault with a dangerous weapon, firearm possession without a permit, and assault with the intent to render unconscious. Attorney General Peter F. Moronha emphasized that the defendant posed a substantial threat to the safety of Rhode Islanders as the head of a group known to engage in criminal conduct within the state. In addition to the 2019 shooting, Lancia was charged with assault during a brawl involving Hell's Angels at the Providence Strip Club on February 29, 2020. During the altercation, the defendant punched a man, causing him to lose consciousness. Providence Police Department officers at the scene promptly took the defendant into custody. Lancia was given a sentence of 15 years, with five years to be served at the ACI and the remaining time suspended with probation. Additionally, a no-contact order was granted for Lancia's victims, who was mandated to pay $3,650 in reparations. If he felt any remorse, didn't show it. Crime cases like this are prioritized by his office. 
While Lencia's case is serious but arguably minor, the case of Jonathan Nelson wasn't. This is Jonathan Nelson. Jonathan Nelson, a.k.a. John John, 46, of Santa Rosa. Nelson is one of the three members of the Sonoma County Charter of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club and has been found guilty of murder in aid of racketeering. The nine-week trial before United States District Judge Edward M. Chen concluded that Jonathan Nelson, also known as John John, Brian Wayne Went, and Russell Taylor Ott, also known as Rusty, were involved in a criminal enterprise that engaged in a wide range of violent crimes, including murder, assault, robbery, extortion, and witness intimidation. U.S. Attorney Stephanie M. Hines stated that the verdicts resulted from a lengthy, intensive investigation and warned other similar criminal businesses that such violent activities would not be tolerated. Special Agent in Charge Sean Reagan of the Federal Bureau of Investigation added that the guilty finding was made possible by the important skills and resources offered by numerous agency partners, including the California Highway Patrol and Santa Rosa Police Department. The trial focused on the murder of former Hells Angels Sonoma County member Joel Silva, which the prosecution alleged was orchestrated by Nelson, Went, and Ott. Silva was causing issues for HASC for various reasons, and the defendants believed he needed to be killed. Nelson, who was leading the HASC then, made plans to have Silva killed in Fresno with Ott, a long-serving member who was friendly with Silva's family. Ott transported Silva to Fresno, where Went shot him in the head at the Fresno Hells Angels Clubhouse. Silva's body was then burned. The trial's evidence also demonstrated HASC's involvement in witness intimidation, extortion, drug trafficking, and robbery. Witnesses claimed the HASC had a reputation for threatening anyone who reported their activity to the authorities. Additionally, evidence showed that the defendants threatened the lives of witnesses and their families to dissuade them from cooperating with law enforcement. The jury found all three defendants guilty of participating in a conspiracy involving racketeer-influenced and corrupt organizations and a conspiracy to murder in furtherance of racketeering. Nelson was also found guilty of using or possessing a firearm in connection with a violent offense and assault with a dangerous weapon in aid of racketeering. The three Hells Angels members were sentenced to mandatory life terms in jail, restitution, fines, and forfeitures. They remained unmoved, even after their fate was communicated to them. The crime Nelson and his group committed, although horrific, pales in the face of Maurice Boucher. This is Maurice Boucher. Boucher was the president of the Quebec chapter of the Hells Angels, a notorious drug dealer and murderer. He led the group against the rival rock machine gang during the Quebec Biker War from 1994 to 2002. He was found guilty in 2002 of ordering the deaths of two correctional officers in Quebec to undermine the Quebec court system. Boucher was sentenced to three life sentences and sent to St. Anne de Plaine, Canada's only supermax prison, where his crime continued. He would spend the rest of his days in prison, but still plugged into organized crime. In fact, still ordering murders. In 2018, he had another 10 years tacked on to a life sentence. Now, the reason Boucher became what some have called a folk hero in Quebec is because most of the victims of the biker war were criminals, but not all. For journalists who covered those years, there are names of innocent victims that are impossible to forget. The prison guards who were killed, Diane Leving and Pierre Rondeau, Daniel Derachet, the 11-year-old boy playing in a park, killed when a jeep nearby was blown up. And Yves Albert, the father of two, gunned down, gassing up his car. He was shot nine times because he was mistaken for a biker. Due to his notoriety, Boucher was targeted for assassination while incarcerated, so he was housed in a special prison section. Boucher had two children, Alexandre Monjou and Francis Boucher, who were also connected to organized crime. Boucher gave the go-ahead for the 1997 murders of Quebec correctional guards Diane Levine and Pierre Rondeau during the conflict between the Hells Angels and the Rock Machine. The selection of both policemen was random. Boucher intended bikers to commit crimes so heinous that prosecutors would not want to strike bargains to turn bikers into spies, in addition to the blow to Quebec's court system. A jury cleared Boucher of ordering those killings in 1998, but the police started to pursue him closely detained again in 2000 after an appeals court overturned the earlier acquittal. In May 2002, he was found guilty of the killings thanks to a police informant. The 
Crown attorney, France Carboneau, frequently got death threats during the trial. The prosecution's main witness was Stéphane Gagné, also known as Goudas, Old Shoe, who was involved in both killings. He said Boucher gave him the go-ahead to commit the murders. Boucher later thanked him for his work. Boucher died in prison in July 2022. Boucher's life would be a lesson to other bikers to abide by the law. That lesson was lost on Zane Wallace. This is Zane Peoria Wallace. Zane is a member of the Hells Angels gang and is in court for the murder of Jasmine Wilson, mother of two, in the High Court in Wangani. The incident occurred in 2019, and Wilson died after being found unconscious and severely injured at Wangani Hospital's emergency room. Wallace was found guilty of obstructing justice with four counts of threatening great bodily harm, three counts of assault with purpose to injure, two counts of threatening to kill, one count each of assault and threatening demands. During the sentencing, emotions and tensions rose high between the families of Wallace and Wilson, leading to a near brawl in the courtroom. The police and court security had to separate the two groups as they shouted abuse and threatened one another. In her victim impact statement, Wilson's mother, Brenda O'Shea, spoke of how Wilson's murder had destroyed the relationships between her other children. Zane was sentenced to life imprisonment and must serve for 15 years and six months before being considered for parole. Just like Zane in Wangani, a gang in Berlin committed similar crimes, and Kadir P. led them. This is Kadir P. A German court found eight members of the notorious Hells Angels motorbike organization guilty of a brutal execution-style murder in 2014. The men, aged between 30 and 37, were handed life sentences by the Berlin Regional Court for their role in the deadly attack on a betting business in the city. An additional individual who provided information to assist in the case's resolution was given a 12-year term. The leader of the Hells Angels chapter in Berlin, Kadir P., aged 35, was found guilty of inciting murder and was also handed a life sentence. One other individual was found guilty of gun violations despite being cleared of involvement in the murder. The shocking attack was carried out as revenge for a fight that the victim had been involved in. The gang showed no reaction as they were taken away.